The Lord says to Simon Peter, I have prayed for you that your faith may not fail, and once you have turned back, strengthen your brothers. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. Welcome to all of you who join us on this Monday, the sixth day of Lent for our celebration of Mass. As we journey through Lent, occasionally it's interrupted as we celebrate particular saints or feasts, the most important ones. There aren't as many in Lent as there are during the rest of the year, and the ones that we have got are quite important. And an example of that is today, as we celebrate the Feast of the Chair of St. Peter. Now, th that might sound a little bit odd to some people. What on earth are we doing celebrating the Feast of a piece of furniture? Uh, there is actually a real so-called Chair of St. Peter in the Basilica of St. Peter's in Rome, right behind the high altar on the back wall. There's an amazing sculpture by Bernini which actually shows a vast Baroque chair. And inside that sculpture is a very ancient chair, which some people believed was the actual chair of St. Peter, though I think that's very much doubted nowadays. But that's not the point, because today we aren't celebrating a piece of furniture. We're celebrating what it symbolises. This is so often what we do in the Catholic Church, a physical thing that opens us up to a spiritual reality. And today what we're really celebrating is the authority of St. Peter and his successors. That chair, which some people say was a senator's throne originally, is a sign that St. Peter could teach and lead. That mission given to him by the Lord Jesus himself, as we'll hear in the Gospel, but then handed on by him to those successors all the way down to our Holy Father, Pope Francis, today. That chair of St. Peter then is a symbol of the unity of the family of the Catholic Church gathered under the leadership of our Holy Father. And it's also an invitation for us to pray for Pope Francis. It can't be easy leading the flock of Christ in any age. And the Holy Father needs our prayers and our support so that he can fulfill the same mission given to him as was given to St. Peter to be the rock on which the church is founded, to bind and loose, to lead us to Jesus. So as we prepare to celebrate this important feast in the faith of our Catholic family, let's start by calling to mind our own sins. We're still in Lent, so let's ask the Lord to give us the gift of his forgiveness on this journey. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory, Lord God, heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father. Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Grant, we pray, Almighty God, that no tempests may disturb us, for you have set us fast 
on the rock of the Apostle Peter's confession of faith. We make our prayer through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the first letter of Saint Peter. I have something to tell your elders. I am an elder myself and a witness to the sufferings of Christ. And with you, I have a share in the glory that is revealed. Be the shepherds of the flock of God that is entrusted to you. Watch over it, not simply as a duty, but gladly because God wants it not for sordid money, but because you are eager to do it. Never be a dictator over any group that is put in your charge, but be an example that the whole flock can follow. When the chief shepherd appears, you will be given the crown of unfailing glory. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord is my shepherd. There is nothing I shall want. The Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. Fresh and green are the pastures where he gives me repose. Near restful waters he leads me to revive my drooping spirit. The Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. He guides me along the right path, he is true to his name. If I should walk in the valley of darkness, no evil would I fear. You are there with your crook and your staff, with these you give me comfort. The Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. You have prepared a banquet for me in the sight of my foes. My head you have anointed with oil, my cup is overflowing. The Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. Surely goodness and kindness shall follow me all the days of my life. In the Lord's own house shall I dwell forever and ever. The Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. Praise to you, Lord, glory to you, Christ. You are the word of God. You are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of the underworld can never hold out against it. Praise to you, Lord, glory to you, Christ. You are the word of God. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. When Jesus came to the region of Caesarea Philippi, he put this question to his disciples. Who do people say the Son of Man is? And they said, some say he is John the Baptist, some Elijah, and others Jeremiah, or one of the prophets. But you, he said, who do you say I am? Then Simon Peter spoke up. You are the Christ, he said, the son of the living God. Jesus replied, Simon, son of Jonah, you are a happy man because it was not flesh and blood that revealed this to you, but my father in heaven. So I now say to you, you are Peter and on this rock, I will build my church and the gates of the underworld can never hold out against it. I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. Whatever you bind on earth shall be considered bound in heaven. Whatever you loose on earth shall be considered loosed in heaven. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. As I said at the beginning of Mass, this can seem a slightly odd feast where we celebrate a chair. But of course, the idea is that that chair represents much more. It represents the unity of a global family. In the family of the Catholic Church, we are from many different nations, from many different backgrounds. But one thing that unites all members of the Catholic Church is that we see our Holy Father as the leader of our faith. That's why we call him Pope. Pope comes from the Greek word, papas, 
Papas, which means dad, father. A very familiar, very colloquial term. When we look to the authority of the Pope, it can be something that causes controversy and debate, especially amongst other Christians that don't accept that authority. And even sometimes among Catholics, there can be debate about centralization, about power, about authority being vested in one individual. And yet, when we come back to that gospel, Jesus makes it very clear that even though he understands St. Peter's own frailty, he trusts him to be a rock that Jesus can build a community on, can build a church on. Now, we who are part of that community, we who are part of that church, we've got to pray for our Holy Father. We've got to pray that that authority that is entrusted to him is always used wisely and well under the guidance of the Holy Spirit for the benefit of the flock, as St. Peter himself was saying in the first reading today. We pray that Pope Francis and his successor and whoever comes after him in that continuing unbroken line that goes back to St. Peter and forward into the future may truly be a good shepherd of the flock of Christ entrusted to him. So that that symbol of the, the chair of St. Peter, that symbol that we celebrate today, may always have strength and validity to bind us together to unite us in faith and in hope and in charity on our pilgrim way, a pilgrim way led by Jesus and the shepherds that he has appointed so that we may all find our way to those great eternal pastures in God's kingdom. For a moment now, let's think of the prayers that we bring to the Lord at our Mass today. First, on this feast of St. Peter's Chair, let us pray fervently for Pope Francis. We pray for his health and well-being, and we pray that he may always be open to the guidance of the Holy Spirit as he leads the family of the Church. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. On this day, let's also pray for Christian unity, that the ancient divisions that separate Christians may be overcome, so that we may be one family in faith, leading to the one Lord. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And for a moment in silence, let each of us think of our own prayers and our intentions for Mass today. We ask for the prayers of Mary, Mother of the Church, saying, Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Most loving Father, hear our prayers. Send forth your Spirit once more into the Church, so that we may be united as one family in faith, following your Son, the Good Shepherd, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen.
Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at my hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Accept with favour, O Lord, we pray, the prayers and offerings of your church, so that, with St Peter as her shepherd, she may come to an eternal inheritance, for it is through his teaching that she holds the faith in its integrity. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God. For you, eternal shepherd, do not desert your flock, but through the blessed apostles, watch over it and protect it always so that it may be governed by those you have appointed shepherds to lead it in the name of your Son. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth, are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that, from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to the, your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. And giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith, save us, Saviour of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, and recognising the sacrificial victim by whose death you willed to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we, who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son, and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, 
with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with St. Peter, St. Vincent, and with all the saints, on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, with your servant Francis, our Pope, and John, our Bishop, the Order of Bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family, whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who were pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory, through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours, forever and ever. Amen. Now at the Saviour's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Peter said to Jesus, You are the Christ, the Son of the living God. And Jesus replied, You are Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church. <laughs> Save us, 
Let us pray. O God, who at our celebration of the feast day of the blessed Apostle Peter have nourished us by communion in the body and blood of Christ, grant, we pray, that this redeeming exchange may be for us a sacrament of unity and peace. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Mass is ended. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Ave Regina Celorum, Ave Domina Angelorum, Salve Radic, Salve Porta, Ex qua mundo lux est orta, gaude virgo gloriosa, super omnes speciosa, vale o valde decora, et pro nobis Christum exora.